Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him. He took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what he said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword shall pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with a husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. We gather this morning to celebrate the great feast of the Holy Family. But what is a family? What makes up a family? I think when most of us reflect on a family, the first description that comes to our minds is that of father, mother, brothers, sisters, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins. But do we think of holy? Because the holy family that we honor today consisted of two saints and the Son of God. And so we might say, how can we compare with those three great people? Fortunately, we don't have to compare. We have to follow, imitate, and do as they have done. Because the fabric of all of our lives, the image of a family that we have are things like a gift from those we love. It's woven together with strong threads of care, memories of baby kisses, sweet smiles, pride in walking into one another's arms, nights of sickness, shared memories of a beloved grandparent, dinners and picnics, birthday candles, slammed doors, sullen silences, diplomas, wedding finery, desperate advice given and received, years of productivity, storytelling, hand-holding, praying together, until we each return to the hand of our loving God who formed us and gave us the family. Don't all of those things seem to be a part of each of our families? Because the circle of life surrounds us all, and it indeed is holy because it makes us holy. It lets us help each other by becoming holy, and it is with God 
the grace, the blessings of Mary, Joseph, and the Christ child, that we are truly strengthened and blessed. The scriptures this morning remind us that the family is truly founded in Mary, Joseph, and the Christ child. But what is the key? Because the family has and needs to have a faith dimension to it. It is a gift from God. The Second Vatican Council calls the family the little church, the tiniest seed of the present and future kingdom of God. And so our scriptures speak to us about family life and its faith dimension that all of us are called to embrace and share in. Because the theme that unites the scriptures is the necessity of living a life focused in our God. The wise man of the Old Testament, Ben Sirach today, he reminds us that in serving and respecting our parents, we serve and respect the Lord. Because family life is a blessing from our God and one that gives rise to joy, happiness, and peace for all of us. St. Paul's letter to the Colossians reminds us that it is in Christ that they have been chosen to be the new people of God. And so the relationship must reflect Christ-like love. And the only place that can begin is within a family. And the truly Christ-like family is one that is filled with compassion, with sincerity, gentleness, patience, kindness, humility. But what unites them all together is that special gift of love, because that is what a family is all about. So what are we to do on this feast of the Holy Family? I believe we are all challenged to live our family life to the fullest, in loving harmony and mutual edification, because that is our greatest and our most difficult responsibility in the world today because there is so much around us that dictates against family unity. And I believe the solution is the one that we practice here every time we gather every Sunday, every Saturday, to center our lives on the gospel of Jesus Christ, to open our hearts to the message of the scriptures, and above all, to be present to one another. Because then I believe troubles will disappear but yet in the midst of them maybe overwhelming us, they won't crush us because they will be stepping stones to other things and better things in our lives, to family holiness, to family love, to family forgiveness and grace. I believe a holy family is a human family. And there are four things I think that make a human being who they are. Each of us, you, me, we all have the ability and the power of speech. We have the ability to laugh. We have the knowledge of death and we worship God. Though unique to each and every person here, I believe those all pertain to the family as well. Because a family needs to speak to each other. They need to use the power of speech to enhance love, not to destroy it. A family needs to laugh together with all the enjoyment that that implies. Because if we don't see the funny side of each other, then we're missing out on something special, something unique. And if each of us doesn't see this funny side of ourselves, then our lives could become pretty boring, pretty glum. I'm sure each and every family has that unique individual in the family. Be it a son, daughter, maybe the dad, the mom, one of you, one of us. There is that unique person in a family that always has that ability to bring laughter into the midst of sadness, to brighten the lives of each of us. And so a family truly, truly needs to be able to laugh. Families know the reality of death. 
I don't mean personal death like at the end of our lives. I mean the little deaths, the little crosses that we bear in our lives. We need to have the grace, the strength, the assistance to overcome them, to grow through them. And finally, a family really needs to be able to worship God because he is the source and the blessings of all holiness. The first holy family of Nazareth included God as a member. And he is a member of every holy family. He is a member of our St. Gregory the Great family. He is a member of each and every one of our families as we gather here in church or in our homes. And so where does the holy family reside? He, they reside everywhere. Because when, when one member of a family fails or falters, a member of another family can exude holiness and grace through their heartfelt compassion, their kindness, their gentleness and patience. As the Colossians were advised, so too are you and me advised today. As Mary and Joseph prayed, as they listened to the instruction of the angels, as they fleed to Egypt, as they rejoiced in the gift of their son, we all need to be a family that responds to holiness, that hears the call, that celebrates our birth, that gives life to all we say and do. Listen to the words of St. Augustine. Breathe in us, Holy Spirit, that our thoughts may all be holy. Draw us, Holy Spirit, that we may love what is holy. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit, that we may defend all that is holy. Protect us, Holy Spirit, that we may always be holy. Bless all of our families as we honor the Holy Family today and every day, for we are a part of Mary, Joseph, and the Christ child. May all of our families be blessed, celebrated, and cared for. And may God's peace live within each of us. We pray together the Apostle.